back at it again. This time I am finishing up my battery boxes for my Sprinter build. One of the hot topics with these battery builds in the DIY crowd is compression because these cells can bloat on the sides. So a lot of people will build up a compression setups like this where they have boards on one end and the other end and then they're held together by either tape or what I'm going to do is threaded rod. I'm just going to measure out some threaded rod, cut it down with a hacksaw, drill some holes in the ends, get some nuts and washers, and get that all set up. I'm going to add some cutting board material, cheap stuff off Amazon, in between. If the blue wrappings get cut, inside of that is the aluminum casing, and that is part of the battery terminal, I think the negative terminal, so you don't want those to touch. So this is just to keep any damage from shorting out those battery cells. So here's one of my mistakes. My initial measurements for my box didn't really take into account the space I'd need for the BMS. You'll see that the wall overlaps the end piece on each end. I ended up having to recut some pieces and work it out so the walls were on it. Here's a trick I learned. Mark your balance leads so you don't get them mixed up. Here's another mistake. I ordered my BMS naked, no cables and no raised terminals because I figured I'd puzzle it out. And I learned that I really wanted the raised terminals. So I found them after a lot of searching on Amazon from a Chinese source. Ordered them, had to wait a couple of weeks for them to show up. And they fit perfectly. They take M8 screws. I took all this to work, put this thing on a hot plate, and used a ancient giant soldering gun to get everything up to heat, up to uh, temperature. So this would uh, the solder would take. So with some of my wood recut, I'm ready to start building my boxes. found that I could remove these screws and the BMS wouldn't fall apart, so I decided to source some longer machine screws that fit and mount the BMS straight to the inside wall of the box. Using a piece of graph paper, start making a template to drill some holes into a scrap piece just to test the fitment. That was kind of a mess. My paper template did not survive the process. While this plan was a partial success, it wasn't a total success. 
I figured my paper template just wasn't accurate enough, so I decided to make another one out of some of the spare cutting board material. To skip ahead a bit, that didn't work either. It turns out you have to be very, very precise with those holes, so I ended up using a drill press at work and using some scrap pieces they had laying around. If I'd learned that soon enough, I could have drilled the holes straight through the wall of the box, but I'd already assembled the boxes and there was no getting that thing up on the drill press, so I had to use some scrap pieces. For the main battery terminals, I'm using these Blue Sea terminals. These mount up from underneath. At this point, I started discovering I probably made another miscalculation, that these terminals might not fit very well with cells. So what I ended up doing is scooching the cells over a bit, and that made some room, and I still had room for the threaded rods to go down the opposite side from there. I also cut some notches out of the end pieces for the compression to make a little bit more room and to uh, allow a bit of room for cable routing. Before the final assembly, I got some aluminum flat bar and added it to the ends just to give it a little more support to make sure the wood didn't bend under the pressure of the threaded rods and the nuts. As the cable I started using wasn't the most flexible, I decided to move the BMS over a little bit to give the cables running from the BMS up to the negative terminal on the lid a bit more room. Pack 1 went together really nicely, but Pack 2, not so much. I tested the width of those end caps in one box, but not in both boxes. And this, it was just a little bit too wide. So I ended up having to sand down those end caps a little bit. You can see right there where it wedged in. But a little bit of sanding later, and it all fit in just fine. As a temporary solution to keep the Bluetooth module from flopping around, I used a bit of Kapton tape and just stuck it to the inside wall of the box. I made a big push and got them done. Mostly done. The battery in the back was the first one, and you can see that the positive and negative terminals on the lid are reversed. And you can see those long cables because they weren't very flexible. And then I ended up sourcing some welding cable, which is much more flexible, and I did it proper with the second battery, the one on the left. I'm going to redo the first battery like this as well. I've got plenty of that cable. Another thing I need to do is redo these two sets of cables to make them longer. 
because this lid just won't raise very far. So this is the old cable I've been using. I could get it locally. I ordered some online. You can see it's just not very flexible. This stuff is the welding cable and it is far more flexible. It's uh, rubber insulation, I assume, but you can do a lot more with it. So let's take this first battery apart, at least partially, and redo all the cables. So here's the hydraulic crimper I use with the bigger lugs, but for the smaller ones, I got a hold of this little device. A friend of mine showed me this. It does the job on the six gauge lugs. Super fast, super good crimps. Just watch this, this is crazy.
So that's that. Battery 1 has been redone. Battery 2, I'll redo those two sets of cables at some point to make the lid work better. But that's a minor thing. I can do that whenever. Very happy with how these turned out, generally. I'll probably redo these enclosures at some point. Thanks for watching.